I got one question, Sammy. This is it? Sammy, yeah. if, if the audience is watching, uh, uh, our outcome was the way, you know, uh, our outcome was to, the, you know, a lot of people ask me and they say, so, Pat, what do you think uh, this has led to with all these conversations? I said, number one, uh, you know, if you look at the lifestyle and what's happened, you know, both Michael and Sammy, they're no longer part of the life. Both of them run businesses. Michael runs successful businesses. Sammy's doing very well for himself as well, which means th- this was a way out. This this worked out, creating content, telling stories, et cetera, et cetera. And, and you've gone to a different life. Now your grandparents, parents, it's a different phase. You're no longer 20s, 30s when you're in the hunt, want to go do that. It's a completely different life you're living right now. And there there is a sincere feel of you wanting to make a transition into the next life. But Sammy, the, the question I have is, some of the audience that's listening to this right now, they see the frustration between the two of you. They still don't know what was, so, what was, so Michael made a comment about your name being there. He says, Sammy drops your name, 11 seconds, he cuts it. What part of that reference upset you though? What was that? Because I don't think fully the audience knows what frustrated you with that comment. If you don't mind elaborating that, if you're comfortable with that. When you make fucking statements about people, about their cooperation, and why they shouldn't get out of prison, and you make statements that the proof is in the pudding. When they get out, they lie to the government, they turn around, and they recommit crimes. And he mentions a couple of people, including my name, in that group. My name didn't have to be in that group. He could have, if that was his feelings, he could have just said that. He didn't have to put my fucking name in the thing. That's number one. Number two, when he he cooperated and did certain things, it was all right for him to cooperate against Nobby Walters, whether he went to prison or not. He got convicted under Michael's testimony. He got a $395,000 fine. He got sentenced to prison. And the case was overturned because the judge made a mistake on the case Something that affected the law end of it, not Michael or his testimony or nothing. And the case was reversed. He comes out of fucking prison. There was there's interviews. People wanted to talk to me. They don't even want to talk about Michael Francis or his father. He hates them. So and this guy here was a family friend of theirs. Family friend. They shook him down for money and then ratted on him. And that's supposed to be okay. So you could do that, but somebody else who has a problem in the, if, he, if they were betrayed or whatever the story is, you, you're going to be the high priestess who tells them you're no good. You shouldn't get out. When he was able to get out, he had a 10-year sentence, a 10-year sentence that was reduced to three years and four months for his fucking testimony. You, you were there when we talked about his $15 million fine. He never paid it. He says, well, I paid dribs and dribs, but I never paid it all. You can't walk away from the fucking government and say, I'm not paying it. That don't work. That was probably done because he cooperated. Whatever his fine was, they probably niched it, whatever they did. I can't prove that. I can't say that. But those things don't just disappear. They're there. So without cooperation, you ain't getting these things from the government. There's millions of people who went to prison. You can't get squat from the government when you're convicted. Nothing. Whether it's a fine, whether it's the time, reductions, you got to do something to get reductions. And there's, there's tapes, there's agents saying, yeah, the argument, the, the, New, the New York prosecutors were arguing with the Chicago prosecutors. They wanted him to cooperate against uh, Carmine Persico. He wouldn't do it or whatever the act is. I, I don't doubt. Maybe he didn't want to do it. And he didn't. But the, the Chicago people won out. And they used him there and he got his favors. He cooperated. Now, he didn't have murders. He, don't, he never murdered anybody in his life from what I understand. That's, but he'll say, I, I don't have cover for that. So I can't talk about it. It's another innuendo. Uh, making the people his people think well, he did what he had to do to get in a life, and he don't want to talk about it. Why don't you just be truthful and say, I never killed anybody? Your followers, probably a lot of them who are Christians, would say, that's good. He never killed anybody. But he just can't, he can't seem to tell the truth when it comes to these things. I don't know why. 
I really don't. So that's why, and that's why he had a lot of guys on the street who he says they're nobodies and, uh, and he knows who they are. I don't want to mention their names because I don't want to start a fucking revolution here, but they, they just bad mouth him all the time until I got into the picture. How could you do anything? He tells me I got into the paper, into the picture. And I, I shut them all up. Michael ain't a bad guy. Leave him alone. He lied. So he lied. That's none of your business. Leave it alone. John Gotti Jr. is not my fucking friend. He's going to do this thing, uh, ma- uh, wet sec mafia, and he's going to bad mouth people. Now, I'm going to give you and your whole audience and Michael, guess who the fuck he's going to hurt the most or come after the most. It'll probably be me. And he's congratulating him on his project. And, and there's a guy, another made guy, ratting on everybody and his mother, which is insane. And I don't know why you would talk good about him. He met with the government. He's done a, a fucking gazillion fucking things that it's, it's a complete joke. So now when he did that video, and the thing that bothered me the most was that him and his wife and kids are in church and they're praying for me. He had a catastrophe happen a week or two before with a young boy. It's not his fault. He could pray for him. Why do you want to pray for me? I'm not sick. I'm not dead. I'm not in jail. Why would you want to pray for me? So I took that little prayer you sent me as he's trying to soften me up from this video. He knew I would explode at that video. Because we're supposed to, at this point, be getting along. Then you put out this video. You tap him on the back. Let me get back to John Gotti Jr. Him, himself, he's sitting in Health Magazine, Health, health Men's Health Magazine, stating that he is a crime fighter now. He wants to put people in prison. He wants to do stories about people who should have never got out of prison. How hypocritical is this? And he wants to say, oh, he's doing a great job. This is your father who did 50 years. I didn't say he cooperated, but this is a guy who wants to put people in prison. He says it. He admits it publicly. It's in magazines. So I got to sit here and listen to this fucking bullshit. After trying my best to do the right thing with this show and have a relationship with him and put things in the past, couple of days goes by and there's this fucking video and I get 40, 50 fucking people calling me. I said, I don't know why he did it. And I'm sitting there like a jackass over and over again. Well, I don't know. I ain't a bad guy. He, I don't know what, why he did it. I, I don't even know what the fuck to say to people. And then this emergency meeting comes up with me and Michael I don't want to hurt the project. I don't want to hurt nothing. I didn't want to be here. You know it. But I said, I'll I'll be here. And then we exploded just now at each other. I don't know what it does to the project. I hope it don't hurt it. I I don't know what it does. And I don't really care. Sammy. Can I I respond to this, please? Sure. Go for it. Yeah. Can I respond to this? First of all, first of all, I don't know who these 40 or 50 people are, number one. Number two. Number two, again, I didn't say anything positive about J- Sammy says I do innuendos. He makes things up. I didn't say anything positive about John Gotti. I mentioned a public fact that John Gotti is coming out with something called the Witsec Mafia. I told Sammy this. I never met John Gotti. I never spoke to John Gotti Jr. Talking about Jr. I have no relationship with him whatsoever. I've never communicated with him other than one time with his lawyer 10, 12 years ago. That was it. That's number one. So I don't even know what he's upset about with that. I have no relationship. And I told Sammy that. And that's the you, God's you honest told him, You said he's doing finish, a great Sammy. job. Let me finish. I didn't say he's doing a great job. Let me finish, okay? That's number one. When it comes to Norby Walters, Sammy seems to claim to know everything about everything. Norby Walters, here's the facts with Norby Walters. Three times, three times I saved his life. Once from Corky Vastola, 
once from Carmine Persico and once from my father because he was using our name, never paid us any money. He never got shook down. He used us for 30 years. And that's the reason he was in trouble. In the stage delicatessen, okay, I saved his life when my father came home from prison and wanted to hurt him. I can say that now because my father's gone. I think I've said it before. That's number one. So when this situation came up with Norby Walters and I was subpoenaed, number one, first, they subpoenaed my father and they subpoenaed my younger brother. And what I told them, I said, look, I'll tell you the truth about Norby. Okay, when I get put on the stand, let my father and brother alone. They did. And when I got on the stand, you could look at the testimony. It's public record. What it said on the stand is, I don't know who Norby is shaken down. I've been in prison. I don't know. I gave him 275000 to be involved in this deal. I got involved because I wanted to meet athletes for my gambling situation. That's exactly what I told him. Yeah, Norby got convicted. And you know what? He had 25 people testify against about the actual facts that happened in the case. So if you want to talk facts, don't just blow it off. Talk facts. Get the damn testimony. Look at the trial. Don't be like Rittenhouse, like everybody had him convicted until the evidence comes out in the trial and the poor kid got got you know, persecuted for no reason. I said, talk facts. That's number one. As far as number two, what I did on the street, you have a knowledge of, Sammy. Don't claim to know everything about everybody else's business. What I did with Persico or my father or anybody else who I killed or didn't kill, you have no knowledge of. So try, stop trying to make people think you know everything about everything because you don't. Let me finish. Very, very I did Where not interrupt you. I, I did not it. interrupt you. I got it. That's no more. Number two. I'm telling you this right now. You can knock my faith like you've been doing in almost every interview that you Don't didn't. keep going back what to I faith. Told you, excuse me. Bullshit. I'm responding Stop going to back you. to your Christianity. I'm responding Stop. to you. We're talking about the mafia. Excuse Stop kissing me. ass. You brought it up. You I brought it up just you now. You just brought you it up. You brought it up about the prayer. What's the matter? You can't have a response? No, oh, I you have a response. Talk. You're you not the damn underboss anymore that it told you. No, when you bring something up, you're entitled to a response. Yeah, okay? yeah. You said it nine times already. No, you but said it again. Said. You yeah. said it again. I said what you, you brought said it up. for me for no reason. When you have somebody die in your house, there's a reason to pray for him. We pray for him every day. He's already in heaven. Well, so there's no reason to pray, pray for me. You don't well, even know Stop the fucking bullshit with this play I said to you... I said to you, you know, you stop your BS, take the text and put it up on the screen. If you want to be a big shot, put it up on the screen exactly what I said. Well, let me ask you I a said, question. No, let me, let ask me you a question. Let me Why? finish. Well, no, I don't I want to stay at one thing at a time. You always I don't want, want to, to say say go something. You don't give anybody yeah, I want to say to something. How did you get that break? How what? did they go from 10 years to three fucking years in prison? First of all, three years, first four of months. All, excuse me. Don't lie. I did eight years on the 10. Eight years. Stop with your BS 3.4. I did eight years. It's a matter of record. Look up the BOP records. Stop with you your baloney. You did 40 months. Stop with your baloney. You did 40 I did months. eight years. 29 months and seven days in solitary because I wouldn't cooperate. So stop the baloney. Stop trying to cover your own self by putting the blame elsewhere, Sammy. Stop. I don't do that to you and you don't need to do that to me. What I did is a matter of public record, the same as you. And I don't care who looks it no, up. Yeah, it is a, pa a matter of public record. And it's I don't a care who looks it up. a matter of public record that you went and cooperated against Navi Walsh. And I you want to say you. you went there and saved him. I just, I didn't say that. Who no, said you said that? saved him three fucking times. That's and exactly then you right. Testify. What the heck do you testify? know about that? What were you doing three when you times. were testifying? Three times. How do you what know? What were you about doing that? when you were fucking testifying? It was you were before saving that. Him? Do you have Do you have any idea what you're talking about? No, yeah, no. Do you? You went and I testified. I know exactly what I'm talking about. You went to testify in a exactly. case. Exactly. What did you do? Go to help him? Did you hear what I just said? I'm yeah, not I didn't denying hear what it. You I was subpoenaed and I told the truth. Fuck subpoenaed. We were gangsters. A subpoena don't mean nothing. You don't go. Sammy. So you tell him I refuse to answer. Let, let me, you let me satisfy you. You fucking stand. Oh, you don't go? Who the hell are you? What do you mean you don't go? You went how many times? I what are you talking about? I cooperated. I never went before. Sammy. I never sat with the government before. 
Why did you have to? Well, only when I cooperated. Only when you had, yeah, of course. Why else would you sit down but you, with you don't go on a subpoena. Sammy, you know, let me, let me make so this That's so fucking clear. legit. That's a legitimate let, let, guy let me, talking let me now. Make this I, I got subpoenaed. I got to go. I'm not trying you to legitimize to go. anything. Sammy, you can paint this any color that you want. Here's the facts. I testified in the Norby Walters case. Go look up your damn YouTubes. I said it 20 times, okay? And all I ever said, and I'll take this to my grave, and you can do all your bullshit research that you want. Nobody went to prison because of anything I ever said. I made sure of that. Can you say the same? Are you yeah, right. I know exactly what I'm talking about because I lived it, not you. You can pretend to live it. You can pretend to know everything, but that's all it I is. Thought you, I think you lost your fucking mind. So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.